Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sam and today I'm going to be showing you how I drew this B in colour pencil and I'm going to be using solvent to blend which makes it a little bit quicker. Uh, it's just good to have another tool that you can use in your colour pencil work just to create the, the results that you need. I only use the solvent in the flower so I didn't blend with solvent in the B so it's completely up to you but a good technique to have. I hope you enjoy the video. So starting off with my initial sketch using a combination of two photos and here's my blender so I'm using the Zestit Pencil Blend and a combination of Faber-Castell Polychromos and Caran d'Ache Luminance Pencils for this drawing. So starting off with the Polychromos I'm just mapping out uh, an outline of the petals using a combination of pinks and purples. I'll list the colours down in the description box below and I can talk about the ones that I already know. So. I'm just going to be getting pigment down as much as I can because I know that I'm going to be blending these petals so I'm not worried about getting a smooth finish or making sure that I don't see any graininess of the paper because I know that the solvent is going to do that for me. So what I need to do really is not worry too much about the details but I'm getting the shadows in and the creases of the petals so getting the basic shape in using those pencils to just get that layer of pigment down. I found with the Zestit Pencil Blend that if you don't get enough pigment down to begin with, then you're still gonna see the graininess of the paper showing through at the end. So I'm just working my way around the flower using the same technique for all of it. If you do want to see the full drawing in real time, so not time lapsed at all, then please head over to my Patreon channel where you can find it there. So just working my way around the flower using the polychromos and that's the magenta just getting the details in. The middle of the flower did have the petals kind of facing forward so I wanted a combination of both just to make sure that I had a 3D look of the flower and it didn't look completely flat. So I'm not worrying too much about the shadows and the details now. I will go in with a second layer after I've blended those colours together with the Zestit Pencil Blend. But I'm just getting the rough shapes in. It's like mapping it out really, just that jigsaw kind of jigsaw puzzle, mapping one piece out at a time. So I'm not really following the reference photo closely, I'm making it up just to add a little bit of uh, my own kind of style to it, a bit of artistic licence. A lot of this flower you couldn't actually see, it was cut off from the photo. So again, just going in with the pinks and the purples, adding a little bit of shadow, adding a bit of detail, and making sure I'm just putting the little stamens in, just to add a bit of interest. And then just going over just making sure I have enough pigment down on the paper because blending is going to be the next stage. So now going in with the Zestit using a really tiny paintbrush and I'm spreading the solvent from dark to light making sure that I don't muddy up the colours and what happens is it just breaks down the pigment in the pencil and it creates this really lovely painterly look so I can fill in some of the gaps that I've got I can get rid of the graininess of the paper which is really handy because you know with coloured pencils they do take a long time and so this does it really quickly really easily so making sure that you're you've got enough solvent on your paintbrush but not too much that it's going to kind of spread out through the paper and you do want to make sure that you let that dry for at least half an hour depending on how much solvent that you've used and then I can go back in with the pencils and just add a little bit of detail once that's completely dry and you can see it's added a bit of pigment with the Zestit Pencil Blend and it's just made that flower pop really nicely. So now moving on to the B, I'm using the dark sepia of the polychromos and I always start with the eye it just gives that piece character to begin with and now I'm just going to be mapping out, I'm using really tiny pencils so I'm having to hold them really low down, but I'm mapping out the leg of the bee, any part of the bee that has a dark part. So I'm just kind of mapping out the shadows and the stripes of the bee, the legs, the eye, 
just making sure that I'm getting all that in. As I said, I'm using two reference photos. So the bee using a little bit of artistic license too. First photo was actually a bumblebee. This is a honeybee. So you can see I'm just mapping out with that dark sepia and now adding a little bit of the cold gray two, I think that is, or three, and a bit of terracotta just to add a little bit of color to each stripe of the bee. I'm using tiny, tiny little pencil marks just to indicate the fur of the bee because it's quite fluffy if you look at it. So tiny pencil marks and working up through the layers going from light to dark, adding a little bit of the ochre now. As you can see, it's starting to build up in color but it's still quite washed out definitely against the darker colors. So the contrast is too high here, but I will be filling in the midtones with some darker colors, blending with the ivory and the Prima Rose of the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. And I just noticed that I didn't see, I couldn't see in the reference photo I was using the face of the bee. So I just added a couple more petals there just to fill in those gaps. So just going in with the ochres now. The light browns to the dark browns, I think I used all of them on this one. And just going in with a darker grey, cold grey, five or six. And the dark sepia, just to get that darkest tone in of the wing where that joins onto the body. Getting those shadows in. Tiny, tiny little pencils here. So going in for the bista. Working my up, way up through the browns, I've got them all laid out in front of me and so I can work from light to dark, building that up slowly, layer by layer. Blending with the Caran d'Ache, they're a wax-based pencil, so they're fantastic for blending. And then just going in with the Van Dyke Brown, darkening up a little bit, adding a little bit of grey around the eye. And you can see I'm just darkening everything up, blending in between layers. I could have blend, blended with the Zestit Pencil Blend, but it was such a small drawing, such a small area that it, I knew it wasn't going to take me too long to just build up through the layers with the colour pencils. So going in with the Walnut Brown now, and just going in with the greys. and the dark sepia again, just making sure. And finally, the black always last. This one does tend to smudge quite easily. So just making sure that I am confident about where this black goes so that I know that I don't need to rub it out. So I'm just adding it to the legs, just making those pop a little bit. Working on the body now, going in, moving up through the browns, just adding that texture into the ochres. Blending in between with the Caran d'Ache Luminance, the grey and the Prima Rose. And then just adding a little bit of shine, going in with the dark sepia. And just adding a little bit of shadow. Adding to that shine. And then going in with the black for the very last part. And into the wing, there's a little bit of red there. Blending in between with the Caran d'Ache Luminance. And just adding a touch of color so you can see through the wing there, you can see. quite nicely pigmented with the pencil blend in the flower. A nice small study to do if you're starting out in colour pencil. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and got some helpful tips on your colour pencil work. If you did, it'd be great if you could like and subscribe and press that bell icon so you're notified of any future videos like this. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.